Now, going to this absolutely amazing report uh, that's a week in the making and 10 years of uh, research, actually more than 10 years. You know, I did say they were going to blow up the World Trade Center and blame it on bin Laden um, two months before 9-11. Uh, I said they blame it on their assets. So I guess two years, uh, uh, 10 years and uh, two months in the making uh, is this special report coming up. And then man on the street watching Building 7 collapse. Here is Aaron Dyke's uh, report. Please get it out to everyone you know. Ten years later, Americans are still struggling with how to remember 9-11. Those patriotic feelings that swelled up in so many after the attacks simply no longer match the world that's grown up around us. Homeland Security, empowered to fight terrorism, has instead been turned against the American people, targeting returning veterans, Tea Partiers, Constitutionalists, Federal Reserve activists, and more. The TSA has eviscerated the Fourth Amendment and become increasingly invasive and controversial. Lies, lies, and more lies about WMDs, banker bailouts, and more, as well as perpetual wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, have proven that governments will deceive to get what they want. And now the fact that NATO forces are fighting alongside al-Qaeda in Libya only serves to undermine the official story. But that official story has never messed with the laws of physics and common sense, and those who would prop up that story for their own agenda have long been at odds with the family members, the rescue workers, and concerned citizens who only want truth and justice. In the years of research, there have been more than 300 smoking guns which blow apart the official story. But in the interest of time, we're going to cover just a few of the most important. The 9-11 Commission itself was one of the biggest smoking guns surrounding the attacks and the subsequent cover-up. Six of the ten Commission members stated their disappointment with the conditions and their doubt about the conclusions. Co-Chair Lee Hamilton, who admitted they were set up to fail. Bob Carey, who said there was ample reason to suspect there was an alternative to what was outlined in the version. Timothy Romer said... We were extremely frustrated with the false statements we were getting. John Lehman said we purposefully put together a staff that had, in a way, conflicts of interest. And 9-11 Commissioner Max Cleland resigned after concluding that it was, quote, a national scandal and that the investigation was compromised. It's a scam. It's absolutely disgusting. And senior counsel to the 9-11 Commission, John Farmer, wrote an entire book saying how he was shocked at how different the truth was from the way it was described and that the tapes told a radically different story from what had been told to the public. The 9-11 Commission was nothing more than a whitewash used for political ends. The investigation was heavily compromised and steered through Philip Zelikow, who had close White House ties and limited access to witness and other documents. And the implications of what was omitted from the official story are as damning as they are compelling. Building 7 was the most blatant omission from the 9-11 Commission report of all. It wasn't hit by a plane, yet it had a symmetrical collapse and fell at nearly the speed of gravity. Statements made about Building 7's collapse on television that day and shortly after made clear what had happened. Building 7 ablaze at the moment and apparently getting ready to collapse. The excitement and the fun that people get watching an old building being demolished. It's reminiscent of those pictures we've all seen too much on television before when a building was deliberately destroyed. We don't even know whether this was... Uh, something that was uh, engineered for safety reasons or it just happened. I said, you know, we've had such terrible loss of life. Maybe the smartest thing to do is, is pull it. Uh, and they made that decision to pull. And then we watched the building collapse. Emergency responders and firefighters were told the building was going to collapse. You hear that? Keep your eye on that building. It's coming down. The building is about to blow up. Move it back. All right, guys. We are walking back. It's a building about to blow up. On flame. Debris coming down. And early reporting was the tell. BBC World had reported that Building 7 had completely collapsed over 20 minutes before its actual implosion. Now, more on the latest building collapse in New York. You might have heard a few moments ago, I was talking about the Salomon Brothers building collapsing, and indeed it has. As you can see behind me, the uh, Trade Center appears to be still burning. It then emerged that Aaron Brown of CNN reported from a rooftop overlooking Ground Zero that Building 7 had collapsed over an hour before it actually fell. We are getting information now that one of the other buildings, Building 7, 
in the World Trade Center complex is on fire and has either collapsed or is collapsing. And I, I, you, to be honest, can see these pictures a little bit more clearly than I. But the clincher is that NIST was unconfident in its own conclusion after years of delay in its report, finding only a, quote, low probability that the building fell due to fires. NIST refused to test for the theory of controlled demolition. The simplistic explanations of the cartoonish official story have been picked apart. More than 1,500 professional architects and engineers have put their reputations on the line, insisting that the laws of physics are not optional during a terrorist attack. Collapsing towers that couldn't have been brought down by jet fuel, evidence of demolition, testimony from police, firefighters, and other rescue workers who witnessed bombs that day were ignored by the 9-11 Commission. Video evidence showed molten steel, but NIST denied this. When you see molten steel, molten steel running down the channel rails, like you're in a foundry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like lava. Like but public sentiment has shifted. Whereas early polls in 2002 showed very few skeptics, uh, as the years moved along, there have been more and more who doubt the official story. In 2006, more than 80% of people were found questioning the 9-11 official account, and more than a third believed it was an inside job or that the U.S. government had a role in the actual attacks. Now, after 10 years, it's the government who has to prop up their own official account. The lies have simply worn thin. The people are now ready to hear the truth. It was elements within our own government working with the terrorists to bring down this country. We're here to make sure that the official story continues to collapse. We're here to expose the terrorists, the people that really carried out 9-11, the criminals inside the military industrial complex. Clearly, our leaders have lied to us. But what really happened? Without knowing every detail, we understand that the official story was paper thin and made for the movie screen. It was more than just incompetence on prior warnings and ignored intelligence about the terrorists. No warning signs that I'm aware of. And it was a revelation involved. that the White House had no intention of making public. President Bush was told in August that Osama bin Laden might be planning an attack involving the hijacking. could have predicted. Nobody in our government, at least. Uh, August 6th, uh, PDP. I believe the title was Bin Laden determined to attack inside the United States. The entire national security structure was compromised. More than 20 drills and various federal and military agencies simulated scenarios that later paralleled the real attacks. NORAD stood down as the hijackers approached their targets the day of 9-11. Fighter planes, radar monitors, emergency response components, and other capacities were disabled by some 20 different drills going on throughout government on the day of 9-11. The left hand didn't know what the right hand was doing, but somebody was operating the system. A shadow network connected the stand down. But if it was a conspiracy, why hasn't anybody talked? The truth is that the media refuses to address and honestly handle the admissions that have come forward. Intelligence officers testified about the scandals inside their terrorist monitoring programs. Able Danger, for instance, repeatedly linked Mohammed Atta and other Al-Qaeda operatives to terrorist plots literally dozens of times. Yet these warnings and many others were totally ignored. FBI translator Sybil Edmonds broke her gag order to blow the whistle and wiretap she translated leading up to and including the day of September 11, proving that Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda were working for the U.S. government up until the day of 9-11 intimate relationship with bin laden and and taliban we did carry very intimate relationship with these people all the way up to september 11. understanding the need for an external enemy colored by propaganda and myth to drive military intervention across the globe is key to understanding the motives behind 9 11. the al-qaeda network with cells spread across the map is comparable to a can opener for U.S. military invasion, exposing nation after nation to war, sanctions, or humanitarian intervention. National Security Advisor Zvignu Brzezinski trained these men to entrap the Soviets in Afghanistan, back first secretly by the Carter administration. Later, the Reagan administration publicly hailed the freedom fighters, carrying out a protracted war that debilitated the enemy. Later, these men were reformed into the Pentagon client Al-Qaeda, to back NATO interest in the Balkan Wars. As the group was rebranded as an enemy, its iconic leader, Osama bin Laden, a billionaire whose family has heavy business ties with the West and whose code name was Tim Osman, 
became the new face of terror. The perceived menace of these radical groups spread out in nations across the Islamic world has contributed significantly to the pretext for invading, bombing, or going to war. Key bono, who benefits? History confirms false flags behind nearly every major war, from the Gulf of Tonkin, the USS Maine, babies thrown from incubators, WMD lies, and so much more. Many of our leaders burned around the potential that a false flag could provide for their foreign policy and domestic agenda. The Project for a New American Century, or PNAC, the neocon group that would soon fill much of the Bush administration, wrote in 2000 how a, quote, new Pearl Harbor could help them pursue their plan for a global American empire, noting that a catastrophic and catalyzing event would help move their agenda forward in a timely fashion. Brzezinski also wrote in his grand chessboard in 1997 how foreign policy had to be buoyed by widely perceived external threat. Then, just days after 9-11, the Council on Foreign Relations met to openly discuss how the crisis could be used to build a, quote, new world order. There is a chance for the President of the United States to use this disaster, and that is a new world order. Now, in the Obama administration, we've heard about the next terror attack. We've seen advisors like Robert Shapiro hail the usefulness of an Oklahoma City or 9-11-style attack. Glenn Beck and Michael Savage both warn how the Obama administration could seize upon another terror attack to blame the right. The Homeland Security apparatus has been turned around on the people. Instead of pursuing suspected radical jihadist, outspoken Americans have been placed under suspicion, including returning vets, Tea Party activists, peaceful opponents of the Federal Reserve, and supporters of third-party candidates, among others. They've all been identified as potential domestic terrorists in law enforcement documents. And this has been reinforced by Homeland Security memos and its constant propaganda. Don't assume it was left by accident. If you see something, say something. Chuck Norris is only the most recent of many prominent citizens who become concerned about videos depicting white Americans, not Muslim radicals, as likely terrorists, cementing the notion that the police state was built for the people. They've been conditioned for slavery by TSA pat-downs, body scans, and other invasive and unconstitutional searches of airline passengers. But now that's expanded into bus passengers and highway checkpoints. The system will never admit the truth that's plainly in front of us. It's simply too invested in the lie. But the truth will come out through tireless research and persistent efforts. It already has in so many thousands of documents filed through freedom of information requests and in the hundreds of professionals in media, government, military, and other areas who've blown the whistle on their part of the schemes. The truth about 9-11 has a dangerous parallel to the JFK assassination. Even as more and more of the truth came out and new investigations were done, including several within Congress itself, the government still stuck by the official lie established by the Warren Commission. And if we don't stand up now, the same thing's going to happen with this terrible and tragic event. Meanwhile, we must never stop seeking the truth and demanding answers. Eventually, we will win. I'm Aaron Dykes reporting for InfoWars Nightly News. Alex, back to you. Great job, Aaron. And that's just a small portion of the smoking gun facts of 9-11. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. And yeah, it's scary to stand up against these murderers. A lot of people say, well, if it's all true, why are you and Richard Gage and so many others still alive? Jesse Ventura. Because if they kill us, it underlines, it highlights, it underscores. Everything we've said and done, it makes us martyrs. No, they'd rather just call us tinfoil hat wearing people because we know the true history. And now we see NATO working with Al Qaeda and handing over Libya to them and billions of dollars and heat seeking missiles. And in a couple of years, when they attack us or take the blame for an attack, I'll be on air saying, look, our government helped put them in power in Libya. And people will go, be quiet, conspiracy theorists. And I'll go, no, here's 50 news clips. Here's the articles. They'll just say, be quiet, un-American. And the biggest issue is they're now rebranding the threat of Al-Qaeda onto anybody that resists corruption, anybody who is a true American and loves the Bill of Rights and Constitution.